Hello everyone, I am Chef Woods from the San Antonio Art Institute, and this is my student, Ron Gephardt. Hi. Sorry. Yes. Oh yeah, this one. Okay. Sure. He's been my student for a very long time, but I just know him as Ron, so sorry, I forgot his name. But anyway, Ron is going to help me um, demonstrate to you how we make pat a shoe. And what does pat a shoe translate to in French, if you remember? Classes. Paste of cabbage. <laughs> yeah, on the tip of the tongue, right? Paste of cabbage. Because when you make little cream puffs with it, and they form, it kind of looks like a little uh, head of cabbage. But we can do many things with pat a shoe. We're going to show you today how to make eclairs as well as the cream puffs. And you can also do a uh, Paris press, and it just kind of looks like a little ring um, as well with it. So with that, we're just going to get right into it. So first of all, what we need, we're actually going to start it on the stove to make our paste. So we have whole milk, that's four ounces, plus four ounces of water. We put that in run. My trusty assistant. Just a half teaspoon of salt, kosher salt we're using. And then we have our bread flour here, which I think is three and a half ounces on our recipe. And this is what you're going to make just individually as a student. So we've kind of scaled down the uh, recipe to make it a little bit more feasible if you all to do. All right. So we're going to bring our water, milk, and salt over to the stove here. We're going to let that come just to a boil, and then we're going to add our bread flour into it. Okay, so okay, one thing. So we've got our water, our milk, our salt, and now we're also going to add three and a half ounces of butter. And I like to kind of cube it up a little bit in order for it to melt a little bit easier. All right, so again, we have our four ounces of milk, four ounces of water, half teaspoon of uh, salt, and our three and a half ounces of butter. We're gonna let this come to a boil and then we're gonna add our flour. All right, now you can see we're just coming to a boil. You want it a little bit of a rolling boil a few times. Now I'm going to turn the heat off and my trusty assistant Ron is going to now add the five ounces of bread flour. Without making a mess. Without making a mess, hopefully. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and notice again, I've got it off the heat. We're going to start to stir. Get all that flour saturated. Oops, I made the mess now. <laughs> So at some point it kind of starts to look like a roux. What does it look like to you? Well, being a South Mississippi, Louisiana man, yeah, it could be a roux, but it also looks a bit like mashed potatoes. A little bit like mashed potatoes. That is true. <laughs> all right, so we have it all saturated here. But you can see there's still some little lumps of flour in there. We gotta cook that out a little bit. But this is our paste. Cabbage paste, right? Cabbage paste, yes, John. So on a medium-high heat, I'm just going to be stirring this around, kind of pushing it around. And what we're going to look for is not only a smoother, kind of a little bit of a gloss to our paste, but also you start to see a little bit of a film starting at the bottom of our pot. That's a good sign. You can also see how that paste just kind of holds itself together. All right, so you can see I've got a nice film around the bottom of my pot here. So I've been doing this for about two minutes. You can see I've got a nice smooth paste. I don't have any chunks of flour in there, but I've cooked out enough of that flour. So we should be finished just there. So I'm going to turn off the heat and we're going to bring it into the mixer. All right, we're back with the mixer here. We've got our bowl. Ron's going to put the paste into our mixer bowl. And you're going to be using a paddle attachment. Now our paddle attachment we use a lot for creaming, with our cookies, sometimes for our cakes. Thank you. And what we need to do is cool we need to cool this paste down. 
So just on a low, you can see the steam coming off. You feel the bottom of the bowl, it's pretty hot. So just on a low speed, we're gonna let this cool down a bit before we can start to add the eggs. So that took about, we should say two minutes, two, three about minutes. two, three minutes for this to cool down. So now what we want to do is add our eggs. First thing, you want your eggs in a container. What you don't want to do is crack your egg on the bowl and put it in because you could risk getting shells. Uh, if your egg is contaminated or has any blood bits in it, you don't want that to go because then you've ruined your whole product and have to start over again, right? That's right. That's right. So we're just going to add these eggs one by one slow. What we're trying to see is how much this is going to absorb. Now, in the recipe it says between five and six eggs. Now when Ron makes his pat shoe, he might only need four eggs. Maybe he didn't cook the paste on the stove for as long as I did. Or maybe he cooks it longer and he may need seven eggs. But what we're gonna be looking for here is a specific, a specific type uh, of consistency. So when you do this at home or you do this in school, you're going to have different, a little bit different results as far as how many eggs you're putting in. So once they put, each egg is incorporated, you put the next one in. That's two eggs. Thank you. Ron's keeping track for me. And if you see it's kind of getting stuck on the bottom there, stop your mixer. Pull your bowl down until we get to the bottom there. Just kind of wipe it down. Thanks, Ron. You're welcome, Chef. Emphasize a lot to scrape down to the scrape bowl. Scrape down the bowl, yes. Absolutely. It helps keep things in the corner. Otherwise, you're going to have a little glob at the bottom of your bowl. So it looks a little clumpy right now because all the eggs not fully incorporated. And that's okay. It's gonna look like that. Don't get scared. I remember Ron got a little scared and thought, uh oh, very really scared. scared this up. <laughs> he did. He did. I'm gonna add a what egg is that? Number That is number three. Number yeah. three. And you don't want your speed too high either because we're not trying to incorporate air into this. Let's just keep it at a low. You might actually need to go straight down. There's a glob right there. Ron's telling me there. there's a glob on there that I need to scrape down. So you I'll get to it in just a second. Right. Would you like to scrape it down? Most definitely, see it? Chef. So right here, that's not getting all mixed. So that's still quite a bit, a little too stiff still. Still a little too scraggy, as I say, a little too shaggy. So we're gonna put in one more egg. Egg number four. Egg number four. One thing I tell the students is, the reason why we're just having one at a time, again, is to check our consistency. But another thing is, if you were to add too many to this, you can't take it back. 
I get the question a lot, well, can I just add more flour into it? Can I add more flour into this room? No, sure. nope, we can't because the flour is not cooked out. Then you're going to have that icky kind of flour, floury, kind of gritty taste to it. So you have to be careful. You really need to watch for your consistency. If you add too many eggs and it's too runny, you can't go back and take it out. You kind of, um, there's no way to really fix this. I'll scrape that down again. Consistency again. Still a bit too stiff. See how that's just kind of hanging on there? Now, if you're afraid to add a full egg, you can always just kind of take your egg and scramble it around. Because sometimes you might just need half an egg or a quarter of an egg. Again, it's always better for you just to add a little bit at a time instead of just plunking the whole thing in. But with this consistency, I can see I need a full egg. But let's say I just need half, so I'm just going to mix the egg a little bit and just pour half of it in. But for our purposes, we need the whole egg. I might even need a sixth egg. So Ron is going to grab another egg for me. Now one thing you'll notice about pat a -choux is it doesn't have baking powder or baking soda to leaven. What's happening is with the eggs, it's, when it bakes off, it's creating a steam, which is then leavening our product. So it's all created by steam. So if you have too many eggs, it's going to rise and it's just going to kind of fall flat. We have to be... Uh, certain about our oven temperatures as well, which we'll talk about in just a moment, but it's steam that's creating that leavening for us. Everything's fully incorporated. Look how much smoother that's looking. Isn't that pretty? It has a nice little shine to it. All right, we're gonna check our consistency here. I can even take it off the uh, mixer here. Sometimes I'll just kind of take the paddle. You can start to see how that's loosened up a little bit, quite a bit actually, from originally. That's looking pretty good. Now at this point, I don't think it's going to take a full egg, so I'm just going to add half an egg, just as we kind of talked about before. So I'm going to run over here, cracking the egg. So again, I'm going to mix that together. I'm just going to add half the egg. Let that incorporate. Check our consistency again. Gently kind of falling off the paddle there. Beautiful. 
perfect consistency here. So I needed, what was that, five and a half five eggs. Half All right, perfect. Our shoe is ready to be piped. So the first one we're gonna pipe are eclairs. Right. So we need a piping bag. Ron's got his there. We have a plain round tip, and this is a number 06. You can use an 05 or an 06. It's a plain round tip. All right, so first thing with our piping bag, we're gonna fold it over. I always kind of say, use it like a puppet. You kind of have your left hand if you're a right hand dominant. Drop your tip in, whoops, this way down. Just so it kind of comes to the end here. Don't push it all the way down, all right? And I'm just gonna clip just right above that. I might have to clip one more time. Once again, you don't wanna just cut the whole thing off and then your piping tip comes out. One more, that through. And you want that piping bag to come about quarter to halfway down your tip. Alright, you looking alright? Ron needs to cut a little bit more. Alright, Ron needs to work it on that. Our eclairs, we want them about four inches long, right? And we need to leave enough space so that they're gonna about triple in size when they hit the oven, right? So one little trick that I show the students so that they can get nice, even eclairs. Just set this to the side for a moment. So here we just have half sheets. So if we fold this into thirds, give us a guideline for how long our eclairs are going to be. Alright, so we've got kind of three little sections there. Now to keep the paper down, we have just a little bit of paste on each corner. Which I usually don't do. I usually stay with this. This is a new trick. Uh -oh. All right. Run out. So now we have our three little sections to pipe. All right. So when we're piping, kind of twist your right hand dominant. You always kind of want to use your non-dominant hand to kind of guide you. Don't be afraid of that. If you're kind of doing this, you'll be a little too shaky. You're not going to have the balance that you want. When I start here, I start at the top, gentle, even pressure, just kind of letting it fall down, and let go, stop uh, pushing, piping, kind of give it a little tug back, and come right back up over it. That way you kind of avoid those tails. So again, so light piping. You might get a few little air pockets like I do here, and just right back over. You don't have to go fast, especially when you're first starting. Tuck back and right over it. All right. So the other thing I'm going to show you is how to pipe uh, cream puffs. 
All right, so we'll show you that really quick, and then we're going to get these into the oven, which we have set at 400 here. We're just doing it in our regular uh, range ovens here. This one is not convection. If you have a convection, that's great. Um, you may just turn that down to 375. All right, so for a cream puff, now normally I wouldn't do these. Why don't we grab another sheet tray right here? Because normally, you don't want to mix your shapes oh, on the same pan. And why? Because they cook at different speeds. Right. So if I have something smaller, that's going to cook pretty fast. If I have something larger, it's going to take longer. So if I have them all on the same tray, I'm going to have to take that out, pull the ones that are done off, put it back. In that case, it's going to, um, our eclairs are going to collapse on us, right? The ones that aren't done. So for our cream puffs, I'm just kind of hovering right over. Notice I'm not moving my piping bag, right? I stop and just right on top, kind of do a little circle. That way you don't get your little uh, tails, like a Hershey kiss, right? What you don't want to do is that, right? right? That's what not to do. All right, so again, just keeping it steady. Stop piping. Just kind of give it a little swirl. Now, if you do, if you end up doing this a lot, right, which happens when you're a first lot. starting to pipe, <clears throat> it does happen a lot. So you take a little bit of water. Our fingers just kind of tap it down a little bit. All right. We still have some nice little cream puffs here. Now, depending on how you're serving your pate choux, you may want to egg wash these before you put it in the oven. Uh, but since we're going to be putting ganache and filling these with pastry cream, we don't necessarily need to put the egg wash on it. All right. So now we're going to put these into the 400 degree oven once we get a little bit of color on them. We're going to turn the oven down to about 340 is what I like with our particular oven, right? Everybody's oven is going to be different, as we know that. Um, but I'm going to turn it down so it can continue to cook on the inside and kind of dry out. So what we're looking for is basically a nice vessel to push all that yummy pastry cream in, right? And then dip it with ganache. We want a nice hollow shell. So we need to dry it out a little bit. That's when we drop the temperature once we've got a nice color on it. All right? So we'll see you back here once we get it out of the oven. Are you yes. still going to be here? Yes, sure. All right, so we just showed you how to do the eclairs, and now we have our beautiful cream puffs that came out of the oven as well, which we had piped out and showed you earlier when we were doing the pate choux, which translates to... Pastry cake. Something like that. Paste of cabbage. Paste of cabbage. Gonna That's get it right. through his head one of these days, right? Right. Gonna learn it. All right. So, same thing we did with the eclairs. We just kind of took our fluted tip, punched just one hole into it. So, Ron's gonna do that last one here. So, we just have our little holes there. Same thing, taking our pastry cream and really filling that until it feels nice and full. It might even kind of push out on us a little bit. Yep, look at that. That way I know it's nice and full. Just kind of wipe the bottom off a little bit there. Yeah. And then same thing, we're going to take our uh, cream puff here. This is really overflowing. Nice. <laughs> all right. I'm just going to dip the top to go over. So that's all right. You can still wipe off the sides there. Again, so as I'm dipping this here, let the excess come off. Beautiful. All right. Ron's wiping off his other one there. I'll go ahead and fill this one again. And just kind of going in softly. All right, nice and cold. Top it off with our ganache. The other thing is too, with the pastry cream, you can always flavor your pastry cream with different pastes and extracts. We do a lot of hazelnut, uh, pistachio, 
plain vanilla is always really good. We can do a chocolate pastry cream. We can do different flavors of ganaches. You can do white chocolate ganache, milk chocolate ganache. So you can kind of have a lot of fun with these. And now here we have our lovely Ron's is splooging out a little too much. That's all right. Again, well, just kind of that's going to be good. I, I know what happened for myself. It, I didn't feel the pastry cream going in or getting heavier, so it I just kind of kept going. A little too much force, right? And so that caused it to splooge out. Splooge out. So just go a little bit lighter on your a bit lighter. squeezing there. Lighter and good patient. advice. Good advice. All right, now let's cut into one of these cream puffs. So once again, you can see how nice and full. Again, nice shell filled with pastry cream topped with our beautiful ganache. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it lovely? It's lovely. <laughs> All right, so we hope you enjoyed this. And again, I hope you tried this at home as well. Have a good one. See you.